Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Um, this is a highly requested video. I'm going to be showing you how to make realistic rugs, such as the face rugs that I've done, including Frank Ocean and Kanye West and Mac Miller. And I'm also going to be showing you how I do the car rugs because it is a very similar process. So let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Adobe Photoshop. So once Photoshop is open, we're going to create a new document. So first, let's take this photo of Frank Ocean. Make it a little bit bigger. And so obviously this image is already just his face. His face has already been cropped. There's no background. So so there isn't really a reason to use Photoshop for this one specifically, but when I get to the car one, you'll see why. But usually what I would do, let's say there is a background, Adobe Photoshop has this option right here. It says select subject and you click on that. And nine times out of 10, it'll be perfectly cut out like that. And then you hit select and mask. And what I often do is I'll move this smoothness up a little bit to make the edges a little more fine and then you output it to a layer mask, hit OK, and then you export it. But for this, it's already cut, so, so let's go to Adobe Illustrator. We'll open a new file, and then let's take the photo, and then we take the photo, drag it in make it fit the document somewhat. And so up here, you'll see this option here. It says image trace. You can click on the arrow next to it and there's gonna be a lot of different options. The ones that I mainly stick to are low fidelity photo, six colors and 16 colors. I kind of just work with those and see which one ends up fitting best. So we'll start with low fidelity photo. Okay, so you see that the process somewhat worked. We can see the colors separating a little bit, but as far as rug making goes, for example, these two colors, it's very hard to find a yarn that is this different while being this similar. So let's work with a couple of the other options and see which one will work best. Let's try six colors. Six colors, you see, a lot more gets separated and this would be a much easier rug to make and there's not as many super fine details because as you know the needle on the tufting gun is already so thick so if there's details like in the previous one that would end up being thicker than that it's not really possible to do we see here we have you know we have good separation of the different colors on his face and the separation of his hair and even his teeth. So I'd say that's a great place to start. But in the meantime, let's just try out the other option, which would be 16 colors. And you see, it kind of goes back to how that first one was where there's a lot of different things. So what you can also do is go over to this option here. So currently it says color 16. Let's say we change the colors to five. Okay, and there you go. It goes really similar to the six color one which is one less, obviously, five colors. And you have that to work with as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind, let's go back to low fidelity photo. And you'll see that with low fidelity photo, it still keeps the white parts of his eyes. And so sometimes what you run into is, let's go back to six colors. It gets rid of the white in his eyes and turns it into a more tan color. So what you kind of have to do with stuff like that is you have to just remember that this part is white because obviously when you trace the rug onto the fabric, it's just in one solid color. So you just have to make note that this is gonna be white and not entirely base it on the image trace. Let's do another example that I had done recently Okay, let's take another example here of the Catronado rug that I recently did. 
because this has a similar scenario to what I was just talking about. So let's do image trace again. Let's do the six color option. Okay, so you see the colors are very separated here. And this was actually the format that I used when doing the rook. Now, obviously you see sections like up here where it turns brown, where it should actually be this uh, turquoisey color. So that's just another thing you have to make note of. And then also the eyes completely changed. So when it came to the eyes, that was another thing that I had to just make a judgment about. I had to determine, okay, let me look at the actual image and figure out where each color should go. So while this process is very easy and it's ideal, it's not always perfect. And so you kind of just have to get creative with that when that sort of thing comes up. But in the end, it's not too big of a deal. And there are certain ways around it. I think what I actually ended up doing for the final Catronata rug is I did, let's try low fidelity photo. And you see that the eyes actually, the colors get separated quite well. I think what I ended up doing is taking this in Photoshop, cropping out the eyes, and then placing the eyes from the low fidelity photo onto the six color image. So that's another thing you can do. So let's move on to a car rug. So let's go back into Photoshop. We'll get rid of Frank Ocean there. Love Frank Ocean, great artist. It was actually the first rug I ever did was Frank Ocean's Blonde album cover. If you haven't heard Frank Ocean, that's your homework for tonight is to listen to Frank Ocean. Okay. Let's move on to this Ferrari F40, which great car, excellent car. One of my dream cars, obviously a very sought after car in the car community. So I just found this image just this morning on Google images, Ferrari F40. It's nice because the background is fairly neutral. So if you're able to find a picture where the background is fairly neutral and there's not a lot of details, it makes your process a lot easier. So we'll do select subject. Okay, and you'll see you'll they cropped it pretty good right off the bat. Sometimes you have to go in and and manually add a couple little spots. Let's say you want to add in the shadow or whatnot, you're gonna have to do that um, with the quick selection tool. But for this case, we don't really have to do that. Worked out pretty well. We go to select a mask. You see it's a little rough around the edges, but for the most part, you'll be able to work with this. So that's why I like to use this smooth option because as you do it, you see those rough edges disappear a little bit. And it just makes for cleaner lines. Obviously, you'll know what's rough and what's not, especially when it comes to something like a tire, but you know, it's always nice to have that smooth option. So we'll output to a layer mask. And then we have that. So let's export this really quick. And now let's go back into Adobe Illustrator. Get rid of K Tronata here. It's another part of your homework. Go listen to that album. One of the best albums of all time, K Tronata, Bubba. Won a Grammy for it. Okay, so this one came in a little big, so let's shrink it down. Also very important, when you are changing the size of your object, be sure to hold down the shift key. Because if you don't, it will get all stretched or whatever, it won't be uniform. So make sure you're holding down the shift key when you're doing that. Okay, we got it in the center here. Let's go to image trace and let's try six colors. We'll do the same as the other ones. We'll try six colors first and we'll see how it turns out. Sometimes this process takes a little bit to load it up. So a minute or two and you'll be good to go. Okay, so you see, this isn't bad, right? You could definitely work with this. And if this is kind of the style that you're looking for, this looks a little more like cartoonish, something like that, which if that's what you're aiming for, then this turns out pretty well. Also, the reason that this is gray right here is because it caught a little bit of the background. And usually I will just have it be either black or white, depending on what the car is. Or I'll even ask if the customer wants to, I can say, Look, the gap from the spoiler to the body, I can cut that out so that when the rug is finished, there's actually a hole in it. So you kind of see the floor beneath you. Some people like that. Um, but again, 
just know that this is the background. So again, not too bad, but me personally, I really want to capture, you know, the color of the headlights as well as the color of the Ferrari emblem. So let's try a different one. Let's try low fidelity photo. I'd say low fidelity photo and six colors are the most common ones that I use that I find work best for me and have been time and time again. Okay, so see how this one turned out now. We got more detail in the rims, which is great. And you can see the Ferrari emblems are actually yellow, which is another great thing. You could have determined that beforehand, um, but you know, this is just for me personally. We also have a little more detail inside of the car. You can see the seats a little bit more and the red is a little bit more solid. Another thing to point out is that there will be spots like this, right? Where shadows or light are reflecting off the car. And I think this is, these are great little details to add. Um, for example, I'm working on a car currently and they sent the photo, it's a white car. They sent the photo and it had a little bit of shadow. So you would think, oh, let's just make the entire car white. But honestly, sometimes that doesn't give the rug enough dimension. And so around half of the car is gonna be like a lighter gray color to kind of add to the depth of the rug overall. And to go back to this, you know, you can see the headlights are a little more defined. You can kind of see those light reflections in here too. So this is a great place to start. So once you have these, you're kind of good to go. And you can export this as a JPEG or a PNG or whatever you want and hook up your projector and it'll work perfectly. So just some things to keep in mind here. I think wheels on cars, if we're talking about cars specifically, wheels on cars are some of the most difficult things to do. I always save them for last because the details are very fine. And this is probably the only time where I end up using one strand of yarn instead of two. Um, but just, just keep in mind how detailed these are so that if you think it looks good now, you might export it. And when you put it on the projector, the details are so small, you can't even do it. So I'd say the wheels are a big thing to look out for, but also it kind of depends on the car because like I said, the first one worked out pretty well, but the emblems weren't yellow. The headlights were a little off. The lighting was a little off. So Really what you can do is similar to what I mentioned before. It either, sometimes it comes out perfectly or maybe even, you know, you wanna do, let's say the 16 color option. And then you wanna come back over here and maybe switch from 16 to eight colors. And see that one turned out a little different than the other ones. Maybe this is what you want yours to look like. If that's the case, that works out perfect. But just know that you are not bound by these amounts of colors and presets. The reason I only went through these ones is for example, high fidelity photo, the, um, the details are way too fine and there's a bunch of different colors that wouldn't really be possible. And then you have sketched art and black and white, stuff like that. Most of the time you wanna have color. So those are just the ones that I stick with. Now, something to keep in mind to kind of close off with is, you know, oftentimes, when you're starting to make rugs, sometimes your customers won't really know the entire process and they will just send you an image of whatever it may be. So what I like to do is you don't wanna make a promise you can't keep. So if someone sends me a car or they send me a face or they send me photos of their dogs or whatever it may be, before I can even guarantee them a rug, I will run through this process. And if it works out, that's great. I'll quote them a price and then we can go from there. If it doesn't end up working out, instead of just saying no, try to ask maybe, oh, do you have a different angle? Do you have it in different lighting? For example, the car I'm working on currently, she sent over a couple images at first that would have worked, but I noticed that the car was in, had a lot of shadows on it and it kind of would have messed up this process. And the angles were a little off, so the rug would have been a little more sh uh, shorter rather than a little bit taller and wider. 
And so I just asked her, I said, you know, I can work with these, but it could, it would either be too short, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. If you have other angles or if you have photos in different lighting, send them over, send as many as you can, and I can pick one of them and I'll let you know. She ended up setting, sending one that worked out perfectly. And so we can go from there. So what I would say is don't get discouraged if someone sends you a photo and you think, oh, this is impossible, it can never happen. Because there is always, usually, I shouldn't say always, but nine times out of 10, there's a way to figure it out. You know, I did the Mo Sala rug for a friend that he literally just sent me an image that he had on his phone while he was at the game. And that one it did take a lot to figure out, but you know, at the end of the day, you're not just, you're not just tracing something and, and that's it. It's like a lot of times you have to get very creative. It's not, it's not so black and white. Like you just have to get creative with it basically is what I'm trying to say. And I, I don't want you to get discouraged if, for example, you really want to do your favorite artist's face rug and you think it would be awesome and then you find an image and you think it'll work perfect and it's not working in the image trace just know that it's not going to be always as easy as it seems but use your creativity and you'll be able to figure it out so i hope this helps you guys with this process um, i know that a lot of people have been requesting me to do a video on this so I hope this lived up to your expectations. But of course, if you have any further questions about the process, feel free to leave a comment below. I know I just did one face and one car and you know, it doesn't always work out exactly like that. So if you have any further questions, comment below. Maybe I'll make a follow-up if needed, but I hope this helps and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.